Good morning, everyone. This is Patrick from Vicious Computers, and welcome back to a second video in a series of videos focused around the Panamax or the Furman Pro models. Specifically, I have the M4315 Pro, and I want to just kind of show you how awesome this can be. Uh, it was designed, I think, mostly as either an enterprise product. I bought three of them used on eBay, and at least two of them came from an enterprise scenario because I could tell they were configured for turning on switches and routers and firewalls and things of that nature. Or they're also really good for home theater because they have a 12 volt trigger and you can use them to trigger on your equipment based from your AVR sitting at that 12 volt trigger. In today's video and in the next video, now we're gonna like really just explode the capacity of what these can do by turning them into home automation switches for smart homes. And uh, so what I like about it is that it could be controlled through Telnet. And Telnet is a way that you can automate these at your house in a smart home environment or from your desktop and it's local now local meaning no cloud service no internet needed to make it work funny enough i spent two hours of my life this morning on hold because my internet was out i had a frontier fios they must have done like a firmware update to the optical network terminator it killed my service i had to call and wait forever and ever and ever to get it fixed they were able to fix it by reprovisioning my service. And during that time, my house still worked because almost all the automation, all the smart home stuff that I have here, I've designed and built to be local. So the only thing I lost was Aleka because Aleka is on the cloud and I lost Netflix, but I have my Plex server, so I had movies to watch anyways. But local control is really important because you don't want to lose it when the services are down. This Panamax for $100 on eBay is a eight port smart switch that can be locally controlled and it has surge protection and noise isolation and it's just an amazing device. So I decided to break this into two videos today. We're gonna to go over scripting on our desktops. So this is gonna be focused on desktop side control. And in the next video, I'm gonna get into home assistant and how to actually have like home automation type stuff for this. So let's minimize this, let's get out of the there's no scripts here. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and doing a quick recording on my lunch break. And um, so let's go first of all. Last video, I showed you how to use PuTTY to connect to one of these. So I have one unit set up, which is destined for my bedroom. I haven't set a static IP for it yet, but this is the current IP it has. So we're on um, 1118, port 23. We're connected by Telnet. Got a camera set up on a lamp so you can actually see this. So just to show, we can do telnet commands. We'll do switch one on, and you'll see that lamp come on. And we can do the opposite, switch one off and turn it off. All right, let's start automating it. Uh, so my favorite scripting language is auto it. We'll call this YouTube tutorial. Let's go ahead and also open up a browser real quick. Now if you just go to Google and you type in auto it, you'll definitely find it and go to auto it downloads. Completely free, very powerful, fun. It can do so much stuff. So from auto it downloads, make sure you download the actual current version of the program. And I would also recommend very strongly that you download the uh, SCITE, the script editor. So gr grab these two downloads. Then you can start doing what we're doing here, creating a script. So let's go to edit the script. It will open up an SCITE since we have that installed. And let's start on our first script. So built-in native functions, we don't have to add anything to do this. I'm gonna type out very basics first and then let you kind of build on it from there. So TCP, uh, if you didn't know, Telnet is TCP. We're going to uh, do the TCP startup and start that service. We're gonna give ourselves a variable. I'm just gonna call it an object uh, with the name of socket and say TCP connect. Where are we connecting to? It's 192.168.1118 and it's on port 23. 
Now TCP send. We're going to send it to our object. And what are we sending? So we're going to say the same thing we've typed manually. Switch one on. And that's in quotes because it's sending it as text. And at CRLF is a uh, line break. It's like pressing the enter key. That's what we're going to send. And then we're going to do TCP close and close that object. We don't want to leave it open indefinitely and TCP shut down. That is our first script. So we'll save it. Tools, go. And there we go. Turns the light on. Let's just change this now to off. And run it again. And it turns it off. So with this, I can go into tools. I can go to compile. I can turn this into an EXE and have an on and an off script. And let's think of ways to actually start using this. If you didn't know, you can go into uh, File Explorer and type um, shell com a colon startup. And this will take you to your startup folder. This is where a lot of things will start automatically. And if you have some programs that start themselves automatically, they might do it this way. That, that's how I launch my uh, little graphic interface that I use for control automatically when I start my computer. You can drop your EXE in here and now say have your speaker system, your mixer, your lighting, whatever it is that you want to use when your computer is on, you can turn those plugs on automatically when you turn your computer on just by creating a on script and dropping it in here. Also, if you want to go to um, GP local group policy editor and local group policy editor under windows settings, let's extend extend this just a little bit. Here is a, a area for scripts for startup and shutdown. You can add any scripts you want and have them run at startup or at shutdown. So with me here, um, I have a mixer, I have a headphone amplifier, I have lighting, I have a bunch of stuff. And if I wanted to save some electricity and not have to manually turn it on and off every time, I could plug it into the Panamax, use one of the eight or many of the eight outlets, write a script that runs at startup and at shutdown so that when I turn my computer on, all of my equipment comes on. When I shut my computer off, all my equipment shuts off. Very simple way to kind of use this in a um, workstation computer environment workflow. Now, here's the really, really cool thing though. Now that we've gotten into programming, it, now that we have a way to start controlling this switch, through programming, we can do anything. I mean, anything. For example, we can build a graphic interface. I'll do that one here in a second, just to show you a simple graphic interface. We could have it uh, with a timer or a time of day. So I could say, turn this on or turn this off based on this time of day or after this long. We could have it uh, m check moon phases. We could have it check how fast we move our mouse cursor or where we move our mouse cursor. We could have it based on uh, keystrokes. Like I could say, if I ever spell out the word, you know, flashlight, that the light comes on. Like, once you have the ability to program, you can do anything. So we just have to have our control first, which we have. We saw how simple and fast that was to get simple control. And now we can expand that out to do anything. So I think uh, graphic interface would be really nice. A lot of people would really appreciate how to make a simple graphic interface. So you can turn this off and on from your computer and just you know by clicking buttons so let's go to tools and this is an s-e-i-t-e -E, by the way let's go to tools let's go to the coda form designer and we are going to build a very very basic and very quick graphic interface all i'm going to do real quick is i'm just going to grab a button and, pl and put it down there and a button and put it here i'm going to call this guy on and this guy off. I want it to look just a little bit better. Let's shrink this up a little bit. OK. 
good enough. All right, so we're gonna say tools, generate the uh, form code. It shows us our code, and I'm just gonna say insert it. Very, very, very basic um, graphic interface. <clears throat> so now we have the code for a graphic interface. If I was to go to tools and go, you'd see we get that graphic interface. These buttons currently are not doing anything. Let's walk through how to make them do something. So I want to take that code we had earlier. It looks like I overwrote it when I said insert. Interesting, but um, I want to create a function. So we'll say function, we'll call this um, switch one. And we're going to paste our code in from earlier. And this is only going to turn it off if we say, you know, run this specific command. Let's make it smarter in a second. And we'll say end function. All right, so we have button one and we have button two. I'm trying to think of a smart way to say, turn it on when we click on. Let's just do this. Let's take this, switch one off, right? Let's delete off. Let's say and, and we'll call this input. That should work like that. I might have to add a space later. So we just called it input. Now for the function, we'll say, we're gonna send it input. So switch one space input. So we want to send off and on and then hit enter. Now let's add our cases. So case button one, we want to run the function which one must be I T C H one and we're going to say on case button two switch one we're going to say off this is all case sensitive by the way for what we're working with so now when we hit button one, it's going to run this function called switch one, and it's going to send on as the parameter, and on is the input, which will put on in here and off. I think this will work. Let's try it out. Tools, go. Uh, syntax error. There we go. I just had to put a line break in there. So one button one is pressed. It's going to send this function. Let's try it. We can see it on screen on. There it is. Off. There it is. Very simple, very basic graphic interface. So I'm trying to think of anything else is neat. Um, we can do process based. So if you don't want to, so um, say you have your video editor. And for me, I use Sony Vegas. And you have, again, like your mixer, your headphone amp, or maybe you're doing uh, recording. Maybe you open up your software. I'm using OBS right now for recording this. Say I had lighting and cameras and such that I want to turn on when I open my recording software. We can find out a process and have things happen by a process. So let's, let's uh, save this for now. Let's come up with a process. I already have Notepad open. I'll close Notepad. So let's do a process-based function. So we'll leave this um, loop on. While one, do this, end. That keeps the script running indefinitely. We'll leave it like that, but we're going to add something in our, our loop. 
Now, I would recommend doing a much better script than this. Add some kind of condition check so it doesn't just keep running the same command over and over and over. But for the sake of demonstration, we'll try this out. We'll say if process exists, and the process will be notepad exe, then, actually I can make this all one line, then we'll say uh, switch one on. If not process exist, notepad exe, then switch one off. That should work. Let's try it out. So now with this, once I say tools go, it just turned on the light because notepad is apparently running somewhere. So I just open up a command prompt here. I'm looking for notepad because it should be technically running. Uh, let's see, task kill slash I am notepad. .ac. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> Did have notepad running. So look at that. If I have notepad closed, it turns the light off. If I have notepad open, it'll turn on the light. So imagine doing that with your video editor, your recording software, etc. So I think, you know, that should cover the basics of what we want to do in this video, which is show you this, this very basic rudimentary scripting from AutoIt to control the Panamax, and then how you can do anything with that as far as controlling it and automating it from your workstation. Everything from a, a simple graphic interface, which I have done now for, for years with this one, and, and I have a switch on my server rack. Uh, it gets a lot more complicated than that too, if you want, because there are commands to pull statistics from the switch. So you can probably check the current power usage and switch dates. And so you can have like a toggle button instead of saying like how, here I have not an on and an off button, but I have a one button and it says, turn it on and if I click it it'll say turn it off it toggles because it's not just sending the command it's reading the status and if I see the switch is off I'll report it as off you can do that too but I don't want to go too too far out on, on a limb on this first video if there's enough interest then we'll figure out how to do that in a later video but just the basics today so yeah I just wanted to show the Panamax unit show you that it's capable of so much more than what you might think it was and it can be very useful in so many different ways in your home environment with local automation local control and it can be done with free programs in just a little bit of your time so i hope everyone enjoyed this video again this was patrick from vicious computers and i'll see you next time